Hello everyone. Today we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to rig something mechanical for a game. Now uh, I've had people tell me before that uh, rigging and bones and all that is are just for characters or avatars or whatever. But no, they work just as well for even better for mechanical items. And so I'm going to show you uh, real quickly how to quickly um, make and rig your mechanical item, which is much easier than rigging like a human or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to have to... Here's my little mechanical item. It's got a bunch of um, bendy parts and then a spinning wheel at the top. So I just did this real quick as a demonstration. I'm going to add a bone. So armature, add an armature. And it's going to always add it where um, your 3D cursor is. So I have my 3D cursor centered. And now I'm going to go into this top um, square button over here in the properties panel. And I'm going to open up view, viewport display and, sh and say front in front so that's with my bone selected so now I have my first bone of this rig I'm going to go into edit mode by hitting tab and then um, get my um, widget in there and if I want to see my widget on either end of the pole, I'm going to have to, from here, select Individual Origin, which I'm going to do there. I'm going to hit 3 on my number pad. I always do everything in orthographic mode. So you to switch between orthographic and perspective, that's number 5 on your number pad. Okay, so I go into orthographic, and then I'll hit a perfect side view. And I'll pull this up. This is going to be the root bone of the whole object, okay, that first bone. Now, I could pull this up and go towards the next joint, but I really don't have to. I can have a disconnected bone, and it'll still move according to this root bone also. So, I'm going to hit the top um, part of that bone, and I'm going to hit E, and extrude that up and then I'm going to snap it back down by hitting my select again and now I'm going to use my arrow keys and move it up I'm going to select this bone and if I go into the bone tab here I can look at the relationship between the bones and I want to disconnect it so it said connected now I clicked off of it to get disconnected and now I can move this up now, anytime you have like a pivot or anything in a machine, you want to hit, you want to set the ends of the bones perfectly on, on their pivots. Okay. Now, with these objects here, I have, they're all separated. And when you're doing something mechanical, it can be better to keep them separated before you join them all. It, I'll tell you, I'll get into why you want to join it at the end. Okay, so now I'm going to go out of edit mode. I'm going to select my pin here, which has a center point in it. Okay, so it's, its origin is set to its center. Or I could, if I didn't have this origin set to center, I could select like these two faces, the two side faces, and make sure, well, I think we're good there. And then I could go um, Shift S, Origin, uh, I mean uh, 3D cursor to select it. So just like that. So now I have that point there and I went back out of edit mode. I'll choose my bone again and hit edit mode. I'll choose this bottom point on the bone. I'll hit Shift S and go Selection to Cursor just like that then I'll go back out of edit mode select that pin again the upper pin I'll hit now its origin is perfect so I don't have to fuss around here so I'm gonna hit shift s again cursor to selected and then I'm gonna choose this bone again out of edit mode choose this bone 
in edit mode in the bone and then shift s selected to cursor just like that so i get a perfect bone working that pivot right there and we have another one so let's do the same thing let's select this one shift s um, cursor to selected select my bone again in edit mode and then I'm going to hit my side view hit E extrude up and I'm gonna leave its its pivot its bottom pivot where it was pull that up and then I'm gonna hit shift S again and go selection to cursor so now I have a, pi a perfect pivot on its pivot point perfect bone placement on its pivot point now for the star wheel here we just need another extrude of the bone so i'll just extrude that out and then pull it snap it back and pull it out so now that's all we kind of need a very simple rig for this but of course now we have to attach all of these parts to these bones okay rig them to the bones and it's very simple with like mechanical objects now of course now what i need to do is take each one of these i think i could probably select them all so let's try that um, select each one of these mesh parts and then select the rig so I have to find a point where I can clearly select the rig, select there, and now hit control P and I want empty groups. Now hopefully this all worked for each one of these. Yes, it did. Okay, so now we have empty groups for each thing. So I'm going to select the bottom one. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select all of the vertices. And then I know that root bone was the first one. So I'm going to assign all of those vertices to this bone. 100%. Wait, 100% here. Okay. So select off on that. Um, the pin could go to either bone, um, so why don't we just put it to the second bone? I guess we could. So go into edit mode, select all. We'll assign it to the second bone. So this is the center pin, and that will go on that second bone. So edit mode, select all second bone assign uh, this middle pin uh, we can put it on either we'll put it on the first bone again just to make it easy so select all assign select that top one in edit mode select all this will be bone number two or o2 assign tab out this one can be o2 also so select all assign and then this top one edit mode select all and the last bone assign so now when we rotate these bones uh, we can go into pose mode now and i'll hit perfect side view select one of those bones and look at they all move together and then this one will just spin the top see that and this bottom one will move all of them so just like that we have mechanical bones or a mechanical object being driven by a set of bones all rigged to it with um, vertex groups and everything so vertex groups here now um, for most games you don't want to have you know one of the benefits of putting things on a rig 
is that you don't need to have all these objects be separate pieces because the rig can identify each part because of what's rigged to each bone. Okay? And in a game, uh, every separate object that you have creates a separate draw. So if you put everything on a rig, you can make it all one object and it'll all be one draw. Okay? Another thing that happens in game engines, if you bring in all of these separate objects in as separate objects, each one of them will have their own rig, so you'll have five times or whatever more rigs than you would need normally if they were all combined. So let me select all, or uh, at least um, with these bones, select all of them. And I'll hit Control G and Control R, or um, Alt G and Alt R. And that'll clear out all my rotations. And now I'm just going to select each one of these um, parts. Actually, we'll make the rig object go into object mode for that. And I have to make sure I don't select anything else. So I'm shift selecting each one of these mesh parts this one and then the bottom one last and I'll hit control L oh um, control J I mean <laughs> control J and then all of my parts will be one part but as you can see it's all this, this is all one mesh now it all still works perfectly if I rotate it perfectly. So just like that, we still have all of our moving parts and it's all just one mesh. Okay. And if you look here, we have just this one mesh, still labeled cube, of course. <laughs> and so after that, uh, you can just select your mesh, select your rig, uh, make sure your rig is in object mode. So select your mesh, select, select your rig, export FBX, make sure you always select um, check selected objects. Um, I usually for these kinds of rigs, I apply transforms and I take off leaf bones and if you have any animations, you can import those animations also. So that's usually how I export it. Um, a real, just a quick look at um, animating. So I want to select all. I just want to be in pose mode here. Um, okay. So select all. I'm going to hit I on the keyboard, lock rot, that gives me all my keyframes. Uh, you can work in Dope Sheet, but you can also work in the Action Editor. So now um, I'm going to hit 5 to get out of perspective and into orthographic. And I'll just make, um, oh. I'll move to frame 40 and then I'll start moving it. I'm going to turn on auto keying here and then like that. And I get a set of keyframes. I'm going to select all and hit I. That way I get enough keyframes there. So, and then maybe, um, I go to 80 and flip it. Oh, why isn't it flipping it? It should just flip it. Ah. I don't know why it's not flipping it. There we go. So bam, bam. And then just go like this and duplicate that and put that 120 and do this 120. So there's one animation real quickly. And maybe 
this one can go. Oh, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so we'll just name this uh, back and forth, back, forth, whatever, and make another animation and call this um, spinning. We'll call this spinning, spinning, and we'll get rid of these two center ones, and we'll just make this thing, um, this top one spin, so like 30 frames, I'll go here, this is just kind of how I do, um, um, real quickly, how I would do, um, a circle or uh, something that's just rotating. I just like to have extra keyframes in there in case something else happens with it. Like blending into other because um, you could just have one keyframe. You know. And then go here and there Okay, so, and this should be, real quickly, if you want perfect um, circles, perfect um, rotations, you have to use uh, keying interpolation linear. Um, maybe I should select all of those. Go keying interpolation linear. There we go. And we'll get a nice linear rotation there. All right. Um, so that's two animations. I have them both saved in here. That's two animations. Now I could export all of this out. Let me see. Let's go back to frame one. Go to object mode, select my mesh, select this. Now export FBX and all this. Apply transforms, um, no leaf bones. And then when I export this out, I'll have two animations in this FBX when I bring it into my game. So that was it. Uh, I think that's uh, all there is for this video. Have a good one, everyone.